Leaders Summit 2021. Welcome, warm welcome, and greetings from Warsaw. How is done here in this part of the world? How is philanthropy done here in this part of Europe and its eastern and central part? This is what we're going to discuss today, showing you different points of view more individual ones and corporate ones. We're going to discuss individual approaches, foundations and other in the next 45 minutes. Patryciusz Wyżga, Wysualna Polska. Welcome and feel invited to spend the next 45 minutes with us. I have great guests with me. Dominika Kulczyk, Head of Kulczyk Foundation, welcome. Olga Korolec, Director for Marketing and Sustainable Development at Ringer Axel Springer, welcome. Jerzy Owsiak, the conductor of the Great Orchestra of Christmas Charity. Welcome. Konrad Ciesiukiewicz, President of the Orange Foundation. And Kamil Wyszkowski, Executive Director and Representative of UN Global Compact Network Poland. Welcome. Hello. Kamil, tell us what it's all about. What is the goal of our today's meeting? What do you want to be highlighted? What do you want our viewers and listeners to learn from this meeting? Well, above all, we want to show that we've been doing good for a very long time in Poland and in many different ways. This is why we have this set of the panel. These are people who have been changing Poland and changing different countries as well. We want to show this multidimensional character and share what we've been doing so effectively here. And we want to inspire other countries with our Polish example so that they can do it as well or even better, because this is what it's all about in the United Nations. It's about helping wisely and saving the world and humanity, humankind, from uh, breaches of human rights, uh, tragedies, and maybe even wars in the future. And it's all about building a better world in the future. That cannot be done without intergenerational uh, solidarity, climate solidarity, solidarity with the poor. For that to be done, we need tools, and philanthropy is one of those tools. And philanthropy has to be done wisely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if it's all about inspiring, then I cannot imagine a better group of people than those gathered here who will inspire you in the next three quarters of an hour. This is what I want to start with, their individual inspirations, their motivations, and the question about what, dear all, are you inspired by? What are you fueled by in your philanthropy? Dominika Kulczyk. Inspiration is a beautiful word. It makes me feel like, you know, we can have, we can be lifted from the ground with wings growing on our back, and, you know, we are not limited by space, and we can take anything from that space, say, okay, this is my thing, this is for me, and be inspired by that, I want to be led by this thing, I want this to fuel me, power me. If I were to say what I'm inspired by, then I'd say the following. I know it might be not so obvious, but it's unlimited possibilities, because this is what it's all about. I think these possibilities are so numerous, and I am very, very grateful to my fortune for what I have. I can do things. That's why I do them, because I am at peace with my own self. It's me. And I came to the conclusion that if I do have the tools, then it would be unnatural to not use them and not make things better, not make things happen as I should. Things should happen and change. This is why we are here. We're here to be who we were made to be. I like this metaphor. I think that these wings and this being lifted from the ground is something we're going to go back to during this discussion. Olga, what's about you and your organization? What are you uh, fueled by? 
well inspired by Dominika, I'd say that, uh, well, sh I think what she said was more about individual motivation, personal motivation. Since I have the tools, why not use them? Well, I represent the media. And I would say that it's a great privilege to work in the media today. Media that's high quality and that reach um, millions of poles. That's a possibility. Uh, you know, I can use this voice to do good, voice for good, as we say. So I'd say that this is a very particular kind of activity. An activity that brings a lot of benefits, but also responsibility. So, well, if not us, then who? That's what I'd say. Well, that's a great combination, because you both say that it's a, a necessity, not obvious, but you feel that the possibilities that you have at hand, possibility to build the right kind of information, true information is a possibility, and that's something you want to use. Right, I think it's about influence. We know that we need change, and for this change to happen, we need a mixture of willingness and tools, and that's something we need to look for. The world needs change and help in many areas. So that's our motivation. Since the role of the media is a particular one, the, the world needs help. And at the same time, there's benefits from the world and for the business environment. So I think that it's a twofold motivation. That's something we're going to go back to later on. This is the conductor for thousands, for dozens of years, or even millions of people. I wonder what's the conductor of his heart. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a studio and behind us is a view of Warsaw and this concrete building, similar to the 30s skyscrapers in the US, is the Palace of Science and Culture. And in the worst period of uh, the Cold War, the Rolling Stones gave a gig there uh, in the 60s. And that's a motivation for me that proved to me that anything can happen. I was a young kid back then, but it was really uh, amazing that in the same place where summits of the Polish Communist Party took place, on the same stage, Mick Jagger gave a gig with his band and the, the audience were absolutely stunned. And the same stage was used by communist politicians, representatives of the Communist Party. Uh, they said all kinds of BS on the same stage. What happened back then is uh, rock and roll music plays in my heart since then. And I wonder why shouldn't it be a way to fuel our joy? Dominika said that we uh, need the right kind of motivation. For me, that's joy. We do our uh, gig, the Great Orchestra of Christmas Charity, not in the summer, in the middle of the winter. And apparently, we have a common denominator with Meg Jagger. And, you know, our joint experience shows that if we have the right courage, we can do something tangible. We want our help to reach every newborn pole, and that's something we've been doing uh, for the last 15 years. That's just the tip of the iceberg. If we want to do something good, something great, then we need to carry that fire inside of us. If this was to be my work, my job, but then I, I would find it difficult to do when I get up in the morning. No, this is something that brings me joy. It's something that, uh, you know, brings smiles to people's faces. This is my motivation. This is what we're talking about today. Remember this huge concrete building with a spearhead on the, on the top. It's something that the Rolling Stones turned upside down and they gave hope to people like those who built the Solidarity Movement later on in Poland. Many of them say, yes, I remember that gig. It gave me such hope. So we can do it. That's it. We can do it. Let's not stop halfway. That's it. 
such a vivid man with the colorful logo of the uh, great orchestra of Christmas charity. If you don't know the organization, this is your opportunity to Google uh, the orchestra that has built a system of help and assistance in Poland. I feel that Jerzy also talked about being lifted from the ground, these wings growing on our backs. I wonder what you think. Well, it's so difficult to uh, to, to take the microphone after Jerzy. I'm also part of the generation that was so much inspired by you, Jerzy. I don't know if it's so important if we're talking about my personal inspiration, but if we're looking at my colleagues from the Orange Foundation, it's a great privilege to work in this business environment for a foundation. I'm wearing a suit today, but I assure you that we usually wear t-shirts on a daily basis. What we're looking for is a meaning of life, a sense of meaning. And this is what my four speakers also mentioned, I think, indirectly. This is something we look for in uh, teens and children and teachers in uh, the system of uh, informal education that we've been supporting for a dozen of years. We've worked out our own system and I think that everybody wants a meaning in what they're doing. That's what we found in the Orange Foundation. I'm convinced that we're going to inspire people during this discussion and maybe some people will be inspired by what we say right in this discussion. I hope so, really. Do you want to add something? Yes, I like to add on top of what's been said, you know, you know, being inspired uh, one by another. Let me just admit one thing. There was this little girl who turned on the TV on a Sunday. She was little and saw Jerzy on TV and she convinced her father to uh, to raise and win an auction for the Great Orchestra of Christmas Charity. So Jerzy is a great source of inspiration. Thank you for that, Jerzy. <laughs> this shows how good fuels good, right? It's a domino effect, right? A domino effect. <laughs> Maybe we are being watched by somebody at this very moment, wondering whether they can become a philanthropist, whether they have the right features of character, the right tools. Who can become a philanthropist nowadays? Well, I think that a philanthropist is somebody who does something good. So everybody can become one on the condition that they are a revolutionary. Hmm. On the condition that they understand organically or intellectually that life is ongoing change because nothing is fixed. That's what I'm thinking. I think that those who understand that, accept that and believe that that is not stressful at all, rather it's fascinating and it's life-giving and it develops, expands unlimited possibilities. They are the ones who say, if everything is changed, then let's go into that change and think about what we can change, what can be better. Everything can be better, right? So we feel that change is good when we want to accept responsibility for being people living the change. If we look inside our own selves, uh, we come to the conclusion that we can do something, we can bring about change. What we can do is what we should be doing. Revolution, right? So that's disagreement, disagreement to evil, right? And uh, the acceptance that we can transform evil into good, right? Yes, but remember to do that wisely. That's very important, because I very often see in the environment of NGOs, like, let's say in Poland 30 years back, there were a few of these, now there are thousands of these, tens of thousands, and one might come to the conclusion that every sphere of life has an NGO somewhere out there in Poland, depending on how we share our responsibilities. 
And the 1% of uh, personal income tax is something that's been already adopted in Poland. You can transfer that money to NGOs. And on every opportunity, whenever I can, I say on the internet, on TV, look at life around you, look at what's good around you and support that. Be the one to um, evaluate, assess what's good, what's not good. We were wondering where we could help from beginning to end, and we came to the conclusion that preterm birth is the problem, a, a big problem that can be easily fixed with a simple laser um, treatment. If uh, diagnosed on an early stage in a newborn baby, it can, the problem can be fixed very easily. So it was a great source of satisfaction that we diagnosed a problem from um, very beginning to the very end. Remember that 2 plus 2 is 4, it's not 22. So you need to uh, understand your numbers. Remember about your numbers. Because it's about money, it's about effect, the results, right? We want to touch those results. We want them to be tangible. It's something that can be done by anybody and everybody. Anybody can be a philanthropist. Whether you give us one zloty, one cent, or 330,000 uh, zlotys or dollars because you have won an auction for a small uh, piece of heart, a piece of jewelry and um, heart-shaped, it's, you know, re re respective of that, you know, it's it's equal, because both are the right kind of gesture, it's a good gesture, it's a good deed. Right, thank you very much. I think the role of the media is key in all of this, because if we want to know what's going on around us, if you want to go know about the good things around us, then we need the media, because the role of the media in informing and promoting, for example, the sustainable development goals, it's absolutely crucial. Managing the media and working in the media, you have a huge opportunity, but also a responsibility to talk and inform. Well, we have been supporting both the great orchestra of Christmas charity and the Akademia Stuk Przepięknych Rock and Roll and other initiatives by Jerzy. We've been supporting them and uh, by being an active part of the collections, the fundraisers. And year over year, we have been thinking about what can be done even better in that respect. I agree agree that uh, there are many NGOs, so our dilemma was whom to help, help, whom to support and whom not to support. Since we are a very big international group, but also an internet portal, we want to work with the biggest ones. We have Jerzy, we have Szlachetna Paczka, we cooperate with the UNICEF, and we want to inform, that is, provide the right kind of uh, quality, high quality information, and, I, and promote these activities. But I'd say that the role of the media it might be controversial in uh, this group. If we're talking about philanthropy, I would say that we should be moving away from philanthropy towards and business and the business department where you have CSR departments absolutely independent of the core activity of the business. We as a company believe and promote and act geared towards that goal which is moving towards a new business model so that this doing good be a part of the business model we i am convinced that the big change to be brought about it requires a scale we don't want that to be limited to a csr department which uh, has, sees its uh, budget reduced at um, every first crisis because that's not of key importance for the business. I think that it would be better and safer for having big change brought about for social activity, for environmental activity, for it to be a core element of the business model. So it's not only about uh, painting the facade green, it's about uh, retrofitting the foundations also. Yes, 
Well, I think that what we're doing is the great success of the new Poland of the last 30 years. Americans told us, okay, if you are helping, that's good. That means you have democracy because you have something you can share. We were learning, we learned uh, foundations, NGOs uh, from um, the biggest. For example, um, the great or Ormond Street Hospital for Children the biggest organizations uh, and we are now collaborating with the biggest uh, uh, corporations, enterprises that uh, uh, put the uh, financial support of our activities in their budget. I don't want to name them at this point, but they are huge enterprises and it's the uh, employees that feel it's something that has to be done. That's an important um, uh, piece. You are representing a big organization is it true that is the employees that wonder what can be done, what good can be done, and they influence your initiatives? Yes, well, we promote voluntary service as well for the whole group. So, of course, it's close to the employees. But I'd say that philanthropy has different faces and different definitions. And indeed, I'm very happy to hear from the others. And it's something that I also experience as a member of the great uh, orchestra of Christmas charity. That that is the first thing that we need is the need. So what we should do is address those who are in need, ask them what's their biggest challenge and support them in solving their problems. I think this is a about an evolution of needs. Fifteen years back, we started with infrastructural needs. There were no phone booths and hospitals, there was no internet, so there were uh, pan-Polish uh, programs for digitizing hospitals so that uh, sick children could call their parents from the hospital. You know very well that, uh, that parents could not be present in the hospital with their kids. Right, so you're looking for this good that can be done close your business, right? Right, exactly. And the, uh, uh, the focus, the focal point of that good are those who are in need. They are the guys. They are the point of focus for us. We do not look for, we don't know what their needs are. That is, we keep looking for inspiration on their part. But definitely, needs have been evolving. Now, well, there is need for media education, digital education, programming, development. But there are places where the offer um, in terms of education and digital infrastructure is much more limited. That is, the society in those areas uh, um, is much poorer. Those, those are the focal points, but they are our guides. Well, in the 36 million strong country that Poland is, we read every single email that we receive in terms of medicine. We listen to uh, physicians what they tell us. It's not we say, okay, this year we focus on oncology. No, we source that information from the um, those that are really in a need. That is, we need to have our eyes and ears open and look what, at their real needs. It's not about, you know, um, taking an enterprise's money and doing whatever we want. No, we explain to our partners that they need to understand what we do and whether they like our uh, system of work. And free media, yeah, I'm referring to what's been said about media here, we couldn't, we wouldn't exist without free media. We started as a TV program, a Monty Python um, style, you know, and we came to the conclusion that we can do something more. We had the idea of helping. And we said, well, we can uh, raise money for equipment in a big Polish hospital. And we said, why not do it? Let's have some fun and have a fundraiser. The same media that inform people, the local media, they are necessary, but the, we need free media for them to be apolitical, so that they focus on voluntary service. Every good voluntary service gives us good, good that boomerangs back to us. Well, a lot's been said about social change. I think that's very important. If we're talking about supporting formal or informal education system, then 
We're talking about, among others, teaching teachers how to teach children, how to teach students. But there's a philosophy of teaching behind that, where students are the subject, where they have to work out solutions together with the teachers. And we're talking about a change that is unexpected, that is, the fruit of the change might be much, much bigger than we foresee, than we expect at the start. Did we expect COVID? Did we foresee that? No, we didn't, right? We, as organizations, started fighting. We didn't even think on it for three minutes. Straight away, Dominica, a huge plane full of equipment, of help, of goods, four planes. We started straight away helping people. We weren't wondering, well, what happens if this or that happens? We are not in a region where uh, there are earthquakes, no. But we are in a region that was impacted by COVID. Everybody was uh, impacted by COVID and, you know, systems didn't uh, cope with the situation, not only in Poland, you know, even super organized, super well organized countries. That was sudden and a revolution happened. What you said before is very important, that is, you have to look around you, what good can be done. An appeal to your imagination, Kamil. Please imagine that you are a physician and you have to write a prescription. What would you write in that prescription for business, for enterprises to be even more pushed towards philanthropy? What medication do we need? What conditions do we need for philanthropy to be more widespread in Poland? Well, that would be a prescription for empathy. That's what I'd say. I want to have more empathy, stronger empathy. I'd like to have empathy as a dominant emotion in every single one of us. Because business is built by people, it's people that build organizations and governments. We, as individuals, decide whether we're going to do good or evil. And since we've been talking about music, let me refer to Czesław Niemen, a famous Polish singer. He said that people of good will are more numerous. When I have a bad day, I always think about that. Remember that light uh, shines through darkness. And if we remember about that, and if we have more empathy in the public life, social life, then we are on the right side. And this is what this revolutionism is about. And I, it's about the willingness, right? The will to do something. Well, if we have nothing, then we will have evil, because evil is a lack of good, right? And that's what you do, Dominika, in your program, uh, the domino effect, effect domino. What is that about? Well, it all started uh, with my understanding that media can bring about change because since I saw that gentleman on TV I mentioned. I said, right, this is a box with a glass screen and this is a flat situation, but at the same time it's so powerful. There is this good magic inside that box, right? Yes. And I said, okay, if there are so many good people in the world that do great things, that do not give up to darkness, and even by lighting up a a small match, they shed light on darkness, then what if we listen to those people, if we see those people and their exceptional character and how they shed light on darkness? What if we show those people to the world through that flat glass screen so that we all can share their stories, so that we have living proof that, yes, we can? That's how I came to the conclusion that philanthropy, which I always wanted to do, because it's the debt I, debt I have to uh, repay, you know, well, this is something we often uh, hear, you know, at breakfast. Look, Tommy, how how easy you uh, have things in life because there are children who have nothing on their plate. This is a debt. I, I have a debt to repay. It's not a burden. It's a great love that I carry with me. I want to do things well. And since I see other people who do this so well, much better than I do on a much bigger scale, then 
can um, overcome all their weaknesses. Then if I can show their stories, then I will do good by showing that good. And that is my way to inspire, to open heads and hearts and maybe wallets. And that's when the domino effect starts, because with, you know, the emotion, the first action, everything starts. Since I wanted to be a war correspondent, then I thought I might combine philanthropy with a war correspondence. And I said, maybe I can go to a war with where I don't have to dodge bullets, because for those people, that is a war on a daily basis. So I wanted to join that war for good life and show it as an inspiration. So yes, it's not only about um, showing stories, it's about sharing um, hearts, about uh, sharing um, experiences and sharing and bringing about a result so that the darkness is not there anymore, so that we lift that darkness, so that I give space to those people to get things out of the system. Do you think it's easier or harder for you as a female philanthropist since you are a correspondent but you also transform reality is it easier or harder for you as a woman well it's just perfect I'd say simply put well, I'd say that women have this reflex of opening hearts maybe too much of that reflex, they have a certain empathy, a tenderness, and openness to emotions. That's beautiful, and I believe that a woman is ch a woman is change herself. That is, if we want to change world for the better, then we have to be the change ourselves. We transform life, we bring life, we are life, because we go through change every single month. That's our biology, that's how we are matter. So a woman is change materially, totally. So it's easier to understand change for women. Thank you. I like the strand of media being brought about so often in this discussion. Dominica also mentioned media and uh, war correspondence. So I'm wondering about the role of the media to put things straight. How do we differentiate between philanthropy that's only limited you know, to marketing and image building, window dressing and real philanthropy? Well, the first test I do is the following. I check what the company says and what the company does. It's easier to talk, it's much more difficult to do things. Companies for many years have already realized that there's benefit for them in doing good. At a very early stage, there was a lot of greenwashing and marketing and communication and companies. I think that in the era of social media and free media, eh, that can be tested very easily and quickly because people say call. They check whether companies do what they talk about. You know, at one point every company became green, eco-friendly and socially responsible and that very often was checked against the reality. So we need to differentiate between talking and doing. In my opinion, companies are doing ever more of ever greater things. And I'd say that a prescription for empathy is something we definitely all need. I'd say that um, if those that have that empathy in them, they have the need to do good, and that's great. Others have this need to do business, or they have their goals that are, you know, given to them, imposed by their shareholders or bosses. So I think that the magic is in fueling that business with doing good. A lot of studies, a lot of data show that these are winning strategies. I hope that there is this synergy, the area where you can not only talk, but also do things, and that brings about results.
We, for example, launched this big action when we became a partner of UN Global Compact to inform people. We thought there are so many problems in the world. We are the media, we have a lot of journalists, the very specialized ones, but it's a very difficult issue. How to help people? Who do we help? And we believe in partnerships. We think that if we want to bring about change, then we need to partner with the right people. So we built a number of such partnerships. One of the first projects was a UN project called Act Now. These were 10 simple challenges to transform people's habits. To be more eco-friendly, like switching off the light, you know, uh, re- um, reusable packaging, etc. Simple things, but apparently they're not so simple for polls. So we said, okay, for 10 months, the biggest um, journalist, uh, editorial team, most competent one in Poland will do this. So we launched that very quickly, but at the same time, we don't, we didn't want to be accused of only talking instead of doing. So at the same time, we launched a program to reduce our own carbon footprint. Because it's one thing to convince others to be more climate neutral, it's a different thing to do something on our own. What do we we want to do as a company? That's what we thought. Very, I'm very happy to have a a very conscious and aware um, uh, board, management board, so we carried out an audit straight away to see where we can reduce our carbon footprint. And at the end of the exercise, the board said, okay, here's the money, let's do what we can, let's compensate, and at the end of in, in late May, we could announce that we were one of the few companies worldwide that we are we are a zero emission company. Sure, a zero emission character is something you can put off because there is no legal requirement. But let's be on the front line. Let's not put things off. Let's not um, drop the burden on our children. Let's repair what we did. Right, great, that's it, education, that's number one. If we do not educate children, then the only thing we can do is complain and rail that something is not working. We need to teach our children what is happening around us in the environment, how we can uh, influence the environment. We teach first aid according to the American AHA system, and we taught um, almost three million children in the Polish primary schools the basic rules of the first aid. This is not a mandatory uh, subject in schools, but we are fighting for it to be so. And we are uh, the, s- uh, the second uh, country with the biggest number of uh, children trained in first aid, second only to Ireland. Remember that um, you know the habits that we acquire as children um, are the basis for our future. There are habits we have to learn. My granddaughter, um, uh, you know, uh, said, uh, Grandpa, I don't know how to segregate waste. I, I don't know where to put this and that. I said, you have to learn. Uh, you know, this is what the um, wisest, the um, uh, most influential people do. We want to learn from those countries that have experience in, in that. And that's where we need education. And that's what we do. We educate. A lot of NGOs educate children, and that's also a role for the media. And that's what brings results, and that's where you reap benefits. For example, diagnostics. That's what's the most expensive in medicine, but also it's the most efficient. We invest in the top cutting-edge equipment, diagnostic equipment, because that's what brings the best results. So if that's something we can can do, that's what we do with joy and rock and roll in our hearts. What, what, what am I doing here? Do you need me at all? He should be the moderator. He is the best at summarizing this discussion. No, I'm not interrupting you. Unfortunately, our time is drawing to an end. So let me now ask, how do you identify, how should uh, be identified, and how do you do that in your foundation? How to identify those areas for philanthropy? for charity? How do you choose where to gear your resources towards? Well, I'm not best positioned to uh, give advice, I think, but what we try to do is uh, 
uh, respond to needs according to the competencies that we have as a group. Only around 30% of corporations have foundations that operate uh, in their area of expertise, which is paradoxical and strange. But uh, the closer you are to what you do as a business, the, the more efficient you are, because the company sees that that's part of the chain of value, because that's how they can find for the awareness and management of uh, their value chain, because every company has its negative and positive influence on the reality. So it's all about maximizing the positive influence and minimizing the negative influence. So there's where this need for education comes from. Summing up, I like to say that it's about fighting for GDP paradigm to have a human face. That's what we do on a daily basis. We want to have GDP with a human face, not only bars and numbers. Or moving away from GDP. Right. Some countries have tried that. Kamil, please try and summarize the discussion even better than Jerzy Ovczak and to make things more difficult you have two minutes. Let me tell you a story then. A story that uh, might summarize uh, this or this debate quite efficiently. It was 2014, and we uh, brought uh, Muhammad Yunus, the Bangladeshi uh, Nobel Prize winner. The goal was to have him on a debate uh, with Bartek Węglarczyk in the tent of uh, uh, Akademia Sztuk Przepięknych, an event by Jerzy Owsiak, and Jerzy said. He wants to go out of the box and have Muhammad on the main stage uh, at the biggest festival in the world uh, for thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who uh, were uh, wanted to listen to rock and roll. And that's how he brought about a revolution, because there was absolute silence and those several hundred thousand people learned what social economy was about, what Grumman Bank um, uh, created, uh, the bank for the poor created by... Muhammad in Bangladesh was were about. That was a real revolution. And that's what we should be doing all the time. I don't want to summarize this debate because the revolution is ongoing. And it cannot be done without the wonderful people here. Let me sum up with one more sentence. Many thanks to everybody who supports us uh, worldwide. Let me tell you one thing. If you don't like what we're doing, just don't stand in our way and we will do our best. Many thanks to volunteers to those who support volunteers, who have even the tiniest coin to support us financially. Let me add one more sentence on top of that. Whatever you do, whether you do business or whatever you say or what you do specifically for another person, if that's a good thing, then we have one. That's the grain. Dominika Kulczyk, head of Kulczyk Foundation, Olga Korolec, director of marketing, and sustainable development at Ringer Axel Springer, Jerzy Owsiak, conductor of the Great Orchestra of Christmas Charity, Konrad Krzyszelkiewicz, president of the Orange Foundation, Kamil Wyszkowski, executive director and representative of the UN Global Compact Network Poland, the man who brought this event about. My name is Patrycja Wyszga. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that we have inspired you. Actually, I have no doubts about that. And a round of applause. Rolling Stones, the palace is still there, you can still play a gig and inspire us once again, new people.